Hello everyone, I am back with an update on the half scale pin setter. Uh, many of you have been asking about an update as far as what's been going on in a video, so I've decided to do that and I'm going to show you the operator terminal in its current state. Uh, as you can see here, if you've looked at some of the older videos uh, of the terminal, uh, I think I did one other one with it, it looks a little different from there. Uh, I made some changes to it as a, after I'd been using it for a while I was finding out that uh, the way I had initially set up was not very good. So I've made it a little more user friendly. Uh, as well as doing that I've been programming in all the faults. So I apologize in advance if the camera's a little shaky today. I'm trying to hold this in and uh, show you a lot of different things at once so please bear with me on that. But anyway, um, I've programmed a lot of faults in. I'm going to show you a couple different ones right now. The first one I'm going to show you is called a uh, turd out of sequence fault. And uh, what happens there is a um, pin might come up and fall through the turret or uh, jam the turn up uh, on the conveyor on top here. Um, I'll show you here. In this area here where the pins go in. Um, and it'll throw the count off because my machine does count and know how many pins have gone into it. Well, that'll cause a problem if we get out of sequence, then the machine does let me know, hey, you've got a problem back here, come take care of it. So it does a shutdown and uh, stops everything on that particular fault. So that will all be displayed up here on the screen. Um, before I get into that, I'm going to talk about the scrolling home. The reason that's there is because I found out that if the uh, bulb was burned out, and the machine had gone into a standby state. If you come walking back here, you may not realize the machine is on. So I put the scrolling home sign there to tell people that, yep, the machine's actually on and running. So that's what that means. But uh, back to the fault. Um, if you are familiar with the uh, Brunswick GSX machine, they do have a little screen on the back that I'm aware of. I've actually never seen one. I've seen uh, some videos of it. But it kind of looks like a little operator terminal. And um, it produces error codes if there's a problem with the machine machine detects something it'll put a little error code up there and uh, the mechanics can come back read that error code and kind of determine where the problem is uh, because they're trained mechanics and fully understand those machines they can work on them uh, my machine is uh, going to homes hopefully people will be buying it and they don't have the mechanical skills uh, maybe that the mechanic in the center has so I need to help them a little bit more as far as how to fix the machine. So that's what I'm going to show you right now. So as I said, the first uh, fault I'm going to do right now is a turret out of sequence. And I'll try and walk through it slowly and let you see how it all works. But the terminal is actually going to walk me through every single step that needs to go on to fix the machine. So we're going to start that up right now and um, get it going and you'll see what happens. All right, I'm going to silence that by hitting the F5, which is the tone silence. Now, what's happened here is that the machine has gone into a shutdown, as I'm going to show you here right now. We've shut off all the motors we want to shut off. You can see the pit light is also off. So everything's gone into a standby state. And we have this message up here on the screen. It says, turn out of sequence, clear jam pins, move turret to five pin position, and press next. So. That's basically all we have to do on this fault to clear it. So what I'm going to do now is, um, again, the camera will probably get a little shaky, but I'm going to try moving the turret to the five pin position while you're here watching. Actually, I have to put the camera down for a second. Okay, I've now moved the turret to the five pin position. Uh, as you can see, uh, this is the five pin on uh, my machine. So I'm now positioning the pin there, and I'm going to hit the next button. And what's going to happen is I'm going to step back here, but the whole machine is going to restart when I hit the next button. So I'm going to let you watch that instead of me hitting the button. And there we go. So I've hit the button, and everything restarted. Now you did see a, a brief change of the screen there, went to an orange screen, and that's just another screen that every now and then the turret doesn't index after that fault clears. So that screen comes up, and if it, the turret doesn't clear, or I'm sorry, doesn't index, then there's a manual index button on that screen. I can manually index the turret, and then the fault will clear. Because the turret did clear, 
it uh, automatically cleared the fault. So the next fault I'm going to show you is a um, shoot deck failed to go to spot. And what can happen is again, you can get pins jammed down in this area here uh, between the turret and the uh, tops of the chutes. And uh, that will prevent the chute deck, which is this deck here, from moving forward. So all I've done right now is I've unplugged the motor so we can show you that fault. But I'm going to press the cycle 2 button. And there we go. We've now gone into a fault. Now the sweep did run. I'm going to silence the tone here again. The sweep did run because this fault only goes active on the second ball. Um, on the second ball, obviously someone's thrown their ball, the ball's gone into the pit, and the machine's going to set new pins. So having the sweep run and clear all that old wood away is not going to cause any harm to the machine or cause any problems. So that's why I have programmed in to let that happen. Uh, there are actually 23 different states that the machine can be in on this fault. So it took some time to get those all worked out, but uh, that was one of the results is that the sweep does run uh, after someone has thrown their ball and even if this alarm has come in. But um, right now we're going to walk through fixing this. So. Uh, it says shoot deck failed to go to spot, press next, and we're going to press deck run, and what's going to happen is the deck will run. Okay, there you go, it just ran down to what I call the 180 position, just like on a Brunswick machine. And uh, after clearing jammed pins, press jog. Now, there will probably be some jammed pins, again, in this area, uh, in the chutes, or somewhere's up in here. but. Uh, I just unplugged the motor, so I'm going to plug that back in. And uh, well, now we're coming back up. So now we've uh, cleared the jam pin, supposedly. We're going to press jog. And the chute deck, you missed it there, but it did just jog forward. And it's now in its spot position. And we're going to press deck run. I'll watch you. Okay, so the deck returned to its home position. And the fault is clear, press resume. And now the machine goes down and spots the pins. So I'm going to shut the machine down for a second. Let's get a little quieter. Okay, there we go. So that is basically an example of all the different faults. Uh, not all the different faults, but how the different faults work. Uh, they will step you through how to fix it. Uh, again, because people are not experienced in repairing these machines, they may not have the mechanicals, that's why we did it. So that's where we're at on it. I have about half the faults programmed in. Uh, I'll be working on the rest over the next few days. And I have scoring in progress. Uh, there is some programming going on and some hardware that needs to be purchased. Then everything will be installed. And I'm hoping to have that all operational in the next two to three weeks. And we'll do another video at that time to show you uh, the scoring. And at that time, the pin setter and lane will be complete. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you again in about two or three weeks. And until then, have a good one.